as the title of the video says, it is the easiest. Whether you're watching part one or part two, part one will be the jerk pork, part two will be the jerk chicken thighs. This is the easiest jerk chicken or pork you'll make at home in your oven. Now you can toss it on the grill outside, no problem. But speaking more easy, I've got two cups. Yeah, two cups of full bottle of Jamaican jerk marinade. That is a spicy one. You don't have to buy the spicy one. You can buy the mild. Um, you know, it's a great, great opportunity to support the Caribbean companies that's making these uh, marinades, if, you know. Um, however, what I must say is that if you're looking, if you are looking for the recipe to make your very own jerk marinade, head over to CaribbeanPod.com. Let me get that out of the way because people want to say, well, Chris, you're using store thing, boy. You're really not All right. All right. All this by ketchup. All this by mayonnaise. All this by salad dressing. All right. Hold on. We say easy. Jerk marinade. Spicy, mild, whatever you want to do. All right. I've got some brown sugar. I've got some fresh thyme because we, we, we got to, yo, we got to put this thing on steroids. We got to really, we had to hit it a little bit more flavor. I like the juice of three clementines, and that's what I have there. Um, clementines, tangerine, same thing, it will work. Orange juice will work. Grapefruit, nah, not so much. Three scallions chopped up, a large onion chopped up, and one can, yeah, out of a can, pineapple. And this is chunky pineapple with the juice as well, too. Here's the thing, um, while marinating the pork, yeah, it, you can marinate the pork overnight. The chicken, no. There is a compound or a chemical uh, that causes, that uh, allows pineapple to break down the protein in meat. It will break down your chicken and it will, you know, it, won't, it will over tenderize it. Let's just say that. I'm gonna go in with the, well, whatever citrus that you guys choose to use. I'm using clementine, as I said. In goes the onion. Next up is the scallion that I chopped up. And by adding all of the, you know, a good jerk marinade will already have, well, the thyme, the um, scallion, the onion, all those different things. But by doing it this way, it, it, it allows for two things. One, you're adding more flavor, fresh flavor to the jerk marinade. And two, it will help thicken up and create that little gravy later on once you roast it off in the oven. That brown sugar will add a nice little sweetness to the game there help it's all about balance yeah because that spicy jerk marinade will need some balance and we'll get some sweetness from the pineapple that we have here now here's the thing about the pineapple the pineapple will also caramelize with the heat in the oven so that's why I would say use chunky pieces of pineapple because later on if you've ever been to the Brazilian steakhouse and they bring out that grilled pineapple you know what I mean yeah yeah, you gotta be a little bit gentle with that one there because I ain't trying, I just clean this stove, man. Yo, this stove is real pressure to keep clean. Anyhow, I probably needed a bigger bowl, but what I'm gonna do now, don't put the thyme in there yet. Now, if you wanted to put some salt in there, you can put some salt, some fresh black pepper, some more of classic Jamaican jerk marinade will be loaded with scotch bonnet pepper, with thyme, all those different things, but the key ingredient in there will be pimento, berries or, or allspice ground up and put in there if you wanted to add a bit more allspice or pimento berries in there you can certainly do that i'm on cool right there. i'm going to give that a mix as i mix this i think i should mention if you wanted to use honey if you have a favorite honey that you wanted to use in here you can you rock that honey instead of the sugar or go half and half the full list of ingredients as always will be listed down below now what i must also mention is this is very very similar to the student version jerk chicken hack that i posted several years ago and that video has you know, a few hundred thousand views, maybe close to a million views. I'm not sure, I haven't checked it lately. And one of the reasons why I'm redoing this video, not just the jerk pork, the jerk pork is relatively new for the oven here, but the algorithm on the YouTube is suppressing a lot of my videos. So I'm dropping it back in time. I'm going back and do over a few of the videos. So it, it may look similar to the jerk chicken video I did a while back. Yeah, slow because I ain't trying to make a mess. No, sir. The jerk pork and what I have here is 
part of the leg that um, I've got two sort of stakes. There's a bone and there's a cap of fat and skin that you'll leave that on. You want a fatty piece of meat because in between you see the marbling and stuff like that. That's going to break down as we roast it and that's going to add flavor and moisture to the pork so it doesn't dry out on you. So um, I would recommend that. Now if you want to do this with a lean piece, with a lean piece of pork, by all means, that is your prerogative. Hey, Bobby Brown boy. Hey, hey. Anyhow, what we're going to do now is just spoon on some of that marinade. I'm trying not to get in contact because I'm going to use the other half of the marinade for the chicken. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to massage that in, flip it over, and I'm going to hit that some more of the marinade. Flip, flip, and we're just going to keep putting some more of the marinade in on there. The thing I like about this and the thing that you can do is to give it some stabs, some little cuts and the marinade can make its way into um, the meat. What I like about this cut is that you see all these little nooks and crannies and little caves and whatever. That marinade going in and there and doing all kind of brilliant things. After you're done doing that, what you need to do, cover it. You know, hit some other plastic wrap or whatever and toss it in the fridge to marinate overnight. Best case scenario. Three, four hours, okay, it will work. I've got the oven preheating to 380 degrees because I'm using the convection setting. If you don't have a convection oven, you wanna go 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I wanna quickly show you guys something. No, you're not seeing things. Earlier there, when we were going through the marination process, uh, I marinated it in the same baking tray I'll be using in the oven but what I would recommend since you're going to be doing this overnight you would want to put it into a ziploc bag or any sort of a zipper bag or any sort of container and put it in the fridge the reason being with this jerk pork I don't want it want it sitting directly in the baking tray because what's gonna happen, it's gonna breeze and the bottom part is just, it's gonna start falling apart and it's gonna start, you don't want, no, we're not trying to make pulled pork, we're trying to make jerk pork. So I have a wire rack that I put onto my baking tray. The problem is, once the weight of the pork goes on there, it will start touching the bottom of the pan there. I don't want that. So while this is the rack for that, for that baking tray, I have a smaller rack, which still works, but it sits about three quarter of an inch off the surface. So that is what we're going to use. And I highly recommend you do that because again, it's going to sort of braise and you don't want braised jerk pork. If you want it to line the bottom of the tray there with some foil, I mean to say that is the way to go. Clean up later will be a lot easier. Uncle Chris just stubborn. Yeah, he's stubborn like that. So the pork is on there. I'm just gonna shift it to the center. And we have all the marinade, which was there before. We're just gonna pour that in there. And that is why I said, you don't want it sitting in that soup-like sort of con uh, consistency down in the bottom down there. And the same marinade that we use, I'm just gonna pour it all over the pieces of pork. That is my oven, come up to temperature. And I'm just gonna move some of the pineapple pieces down we want that to roast off on the bottom there. And as this roast off in the, yo, why it is this thing, boy? You can hold heap of noise in people video. Oven, cool yourself and rasta. Anyhow, later on as it start to roast, if you can get some of the drippings on the bottom there and keep basting it, that will, yo, incredible taste and flavor and everything else. So into the oven now, but one more step. I like to add, piece of foil just lightly on the top notice the space here and there's some space here that is because we spoke about not wanting it to braise we also don't want it to broil because if it broils it will want to tighten up on you and it will become chewy so all we're doing is kind of protecting it for now to create that nice little yo it's only nice flavors going on in there but again lightly on there yeah don't you don't need to seal it up and thin. We're just trying to protect it for now. So into the oven, 380 degrees if you're doing convection, 400 if you're doing just your regular oven. Yo, 
Listen, in my haste to put this into the oven, I forgot a key step. I want to put some of this fresh thyme, and you know, we, we, we talked about it earlier there when I introduced you guys to the ingredients. Just drop some fresh thyme in there. The reason being, that's going to perfume it as it does its nice little happy dance in the oven. It's been an hour and a half, and I've flipped it over at the one hour mark. So it's been on this side for half an hour, and all I'm doing is taking the drippings on the bottom there and just basting it, and I'm just gonna flip it back over on the other side. It will take a little while to do this pork correct, but once it's done, I'm telling you, boy, the other thing I must mention, if you find that you're running out of liquid at the bottom there, what you can do is just add a drizzle of water. If you wanted to add some apple juice in there or something, you can do that as well too. So I'm gonna flip it over, and back into the oven on the original side where we started off. <laughs> Sup soldiers? Listen, if you enjoy this recipe, I'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing. If you've made the recipe, take a picture and send it to me, email address down here. I'm really trying to tell people the email address, then butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it. And tag me on Instagram at Caribbean Pod. I really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today. Irene, Irene. Three hours later and you have incredible jerk pork you did in the oven. Yo, a few simple steps. Notice the caramelization on the pieces of pineapple in there. We've got a nice little thin gravy sort of sauce on the bottom. I would allow it, I would tent it, allow it to come back to room temperature. Then you would slice it up. Notice the golden edges all on the side here. Maybe I need to zoom in a bit more. Yeah, man, we can zoom in some more. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. You see these, that little thin layer of fat and skin that's there now? I'm telling you, boy. I mean, to say, not something we want to do every day, but yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> I appreciate having you all in the kitchen with me. I do hope you get an opportunity to make this recipe. It's a cheap piece, of, a cheap cut of pork. You buy the marinade in the um in the grocery store and then you put it all together Irie? Irie. what's up soldiers don't forget to click subscribe if you've already clicked subscribe hit that bell notification thing i want to all you missing out on the new videos man come on click